Good morning from New York. Today, the presentation will be about the personification of, or personification, love, and personification of the absolute reality. And um, refer to a little bit to something said in the Bhagavad Gita. This belief system. Credit here in the Bhagavad Gita translated by Radha Krishna. Okay. All right. Here we have, you know, this, there's this dialogue between Arjun and uh, Krishna who is said to be uh, an incarnation of uh, the god Vishnu and uh, who is the preserver the supreme person, or God, or personality. Um, you know that, or Krishna. And some say that Krishna was the original, and, uh, and uh, Vishnu came from him. And some look at the other way. It said, uh, Arjun said, those devotees who thus ever earnest worship thee, and those again who worship the imperishable and the unmanifested, which of these have the greater knowledge of yoga? And so that was a debate going on back then. Probably still today. The blessed Lord said, Those who fix their minds on me worship me, ever earnest and possessed of supreme faith. When do I consider most perfect in yoga? The teacher answers decisively, uh, this is commentary from Krishna, that those who worship God in his unmanifested form have greater yoga knowledge in his manifested form of uh, greater yoga knowledge. But those who worship the imperishable Krishna, yeah, the undefinable, the unmanifested, the omnipresent, the unthinkable, the unchanging, and the impossible, and, and the immobile, the constant, by restraining all the senses, being even-minded in all conditions, rejoicing in the welfare of all creatures, they come to me indeed, just like the others. <laughs> so, in a way, uh, you get to the, the wonder of the mystic, uh, you get the forgiveness to a relationship, Anyway, the embodied meaning, you know, you're a human being, right? Well, I've 
already discussed uh, many times. You know, what, what is the, at the core of a human being you know, in any life form is needs and the meeting of needs, which is love. All right. And so, the, uh, that's the core. That's the core realization. That's everything is all of our senses, everything that's about survival and about uh, needs being met. And our view of reality is, uh, is contained in that. And it's from that, uh, the, those limitations perhaps, uh, that the, uh, the mystics come up with their notions. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about love. It's all about relationships as well. And on the uh, social end, right? And um, pretty much social creatures from the beginning, you know, in some ways. And we don't have language in the beginning, but we're cared for by other humans or we die. And that includes picking the baby up and hugging it and so on, you know, the baby. You don't do that, they, they can die. They're social creatures. Um, so, take, looking at it from that perspective, then uh, you try to um, connect to the great wonder of things. Um, to see yourself as part of the all-consuming uh, ultimate reality, which we sense is more than just our senses of who we think we are, and uh, definitely. And that is the connection that it's made. Um, the personification of that would seem to be natural, you know, would, would be that the creative artist in you, which is, uh, can imagine itself above um, your dramatic life, you know, something outside, which people like to refer to as supernatural, um, of course, that's Well, you think about that. Um, so, our sonification um, in uh, the practice of uh, inner mind communication that uh, you know, I and a you know, few others teach is. Um, does personify that sense of ultimate reality. The part of you that imagines contains the universe. Think about it. Your brain. You know, it contains everything that you can imagine or image. contains all of that. Another place in the Bhagavad Gita it says that, uh, that the ultimate person or whatever is uh, more than the creation. Well, the part of you that imagines is more than all your imaginings. Right? And that's the artist in you. Quite natural to personify that, and uh, certainly an easier way to go to get to uh, uh, a greater sense of wonder, especially if you understand uh, what it is. And is there something more than that? You know, is it, oh wow, that's up to you to decide. There. 
seems at times to be something a little more. Um, but of course there absolutely is more than what we experience and uh, known to be reality. Um, part of being alive is to be communicating and, and to communicating and communicate with that sense of reality. Um, well, of course. That's one of the dialogues in the verbal uh, uh, approach, which is one of the six approaches of uh, inner mind communication. The communication between your dramatic self, which I uh, you know, often call the kid, uh, much more emotional, much more impacted by things that happen. Um, and uh, that creative uh, imaginer that uh, I call the artist. Uh, how does uh, how does all that work? Well, the realization is about the love flow. You know, for a human being, it's uh, it's all about healthy love flow, getting your needs met. That's what it is, and uh, more and better the flow, um, the healthier you are mentally, um, and that affects you emotionally and physiologically as well. So. You see how the the mystics say, uh, "Red books like this." And it's, uh, uh, these mythologies um, have a certain truth or verity to them. Uh, if you understand this process that that, that I present every day. forms an entire philosophy. This uh, relationship. And within that relationship between yourself and the artist, uh, uh, which creates all your imaginings, um, that's where you create your uh, change. Uh, who you think you are. And um, it manifests this imaginer, this uh, uh, artist of your entire realm of imagining. Um, manifests as the uh, counselor in your timeline. To help you with anxieties moving from the present moving forward, and uh, manifests as uh, the compassionate empathy in you um, to help the kid, the dramatic self, to uh, to cope with anxieties from the present, looking into the past. Yeah, it's where it's most useful. And uh, that heals that and the other things also uh, help to get you to a point where that compassion and empathy brings out your honest feelings and um, blockages of the flow of love uh, learned and learned helplessness from trauma is uh, is helped by doing what you couldn't do that you were helpless to do at the time of the trauma or during the times of the ongoing trauma. And um, so essentially that means getting in touch with your feelings. And the great Arthur Janoff talked about uh, 
that is a kind of healing modality. Getting in touch with your feelings and uh, expressing what you couldn't express and feeling what you couldn't feel then. And that's because helplessness is not something we can deal with, and as long as helplessness seems to be a reality, then then it it makes it very hard. And uh, it also leaves an imprint um, that helplessness uh, is coped with by your, your brain creating symbolic need and circumstance uh, around that damage so that you have this sense of um, a, a better circumstance uh, a safer perspective and a uh, and a, uh, a more empowering one and uh, and that involves also changing need into symbolic need, which is the source of many uh, uh, addictions. So, all of this works together. Um, the realization of the absolute truth, uh, it's a relationship. You'll never know. We'll never know the absolute reality. Not my opinion. We were designed to do that. Really, we were designed so that we can think about it. So, there is a relationship that goes on there. And uh, it's beyond words, it's beyond description. Um, You have these experiences that sometimes uh, don't make sense. Um, That are loving and compassionate and helpful, but uh, to which you you can't uh, describe any definite uh, sense of uh, cause or in other words it doesn't it doesn't fit into uh, um, what we at this point in time anyway can explain uh, as reality in a theory that a good theory which predicts what uh, must have happened and what will happen. Um, and theories that there are some better, some, some, some worse. And, uh, usually there's better or worse in terms of limitation because each theory predicts to some degree. Um, and where it doesn't, then you need another theory. And uh, they were, we're looking for the, the uh, in physics, the, uh, the theory of everything. Mm-hmm. Eh, well, we may get close, who knows. We certainly make good strides. I wouldn't be here uh, on the internet, you know, without physicists creating all the things, that, uh, the understandings upon which all of these creations were allowed and came to be. So, the awe that someone has, talking about their conception of the ultimate reality or God, is something that uh, the rational sense, and I'm a rationalistic, uh, um, is um, a relationship. As far as we can understand it, it's a relationship. This is Bhagavad Gita says that personifying it's a whole lot easier uh, and more direct. Oh, bro, 
us, yeah, because we're geared to survive. We're geared to love and be loved. So that's at the core, and what the, the spiritual damage is damage, faith, and love. So this uh, teaching, this kind of yoga that, that I uh, talk about every day, That's your brain, you know, rationally speaking, that, that would be your brain. And your brain knows what you have decided to do before you're aware of having decided it. So you'll hear these phrases and, uh, in terms of talking about the paramatma or that of um, God and you. Um, the absolute or ultimate controller. Yes, that's Vedic. Um, supreme controller is one of the phrases you hear. Um, anyway, well, that supreme controller seems to be the brain. It's outside of your imagination and so on, but it's, uh, it's uh, a, a point of wonderment. It's, you know, you have to have a relationship with it and you have to go about your daily dramatic life in the illusion that you are making all of these decisions. So, um, from that self, uh, that ego self, which is not quite correct, but it's a part. Of, it's how you survive. It's how we survive. We communicate. That's how we survive. We see ourselves as a subject, looking at objects. Of course, that's not quite true. We're just part of the flow of things, and that's the experience of the mystic to get in that flow. That is the true uh, mysticism, is to be in that flow, to strive to be in that flow. And uh, it's quite all right to personify the ultimate wonder <coughs> of who you are and what the universe, or that which is beyond our knowledge, is. Relationships have to do with uh, loving and being loved, needs and meeting them, and um, as we mirror back and forth between ourselves, um, we have to include this sense of the higher self, this artist in us that lives in wonder and is the source of that wonder and uh, the Lord of all we imagine because it's the part of us that creates everything that we see here and so on as, uh, as reality and the world has creates that in a sense but then again if you look at the brain, if you look at uh, inputs uh, from outside the brain, it's part of the flow too. 
So, something for you to think about. And as I close, I would say, what I always say at the end, that wonder of wonders in me and in you need to communicate. see every other human being as a wonder watching and know that you are too. The phrase namaste is the wonder in you honoring the wonder in the other. Namaste. Have a good day, y'all.